session, uh, the objective of this session will be uh, that uh, to create an awa uh, awareness uh, regarding the facilities uh, available for food safety compliance certificate uh, for uh, knowledge of the key uh, procedures uh, within the food safety compliance and understanding of the compliances. So, uh, now, uh, the other aspect uh, of this uh, session would be the global food uh, system that is there and uh, how to educate the youth uh, uh, for this uh, in, in the food industry. So, uh,
जब पैंक कर रहे हैं देन इट इज नॉट अ प्राइमरी फूड वी हैव द डेफिनेशन ऑफ प्राइमरी फूड दैट इज नॉट कवर हियर इट इज अंडर द एन तो अगर हम उसको पैक कर देते हैं अगर ग्रीन वेजिटेबल्स को पैक कर देते हैं एंड उसकी शेल्फ लाइफ तीन दिन चार दिन या कई बार नाइट्रोजन गैस के साथ भी हम उसकी पैकिंग करते हैं और फिफ्टीन डेज भी करते हैं तो देन इट कम्स अंडर दी पैकेजिंग एंड प्रोसेसिंग एंड पैकेजिंग देन दैट फार्मर इवन नॉट एग्जेप्टेड फ्रॉम एफ एस एस आई लाइसेंस और रजिस्ट्रेशन देन द लास्ट वर्ड इज सेल ऑफ फूड और फूड इन्ग्रीडियंट्स नाउ दैट सेल इज नॉट ओनली लिमिटेड टू दी ट्रेडिशनल सेल की जो एक सिर्फ काउंटर से और सिर्फ रिटेलर कर रहे हैं अब नाउ सेल इज ऑल्सो इज हैपनिंग थ्रू ई कॉमर्स प्लेटफॉर्म सो दो ई कॉमर्स प्लेटफॉर्म हु आर सेलिंग थ्रू देयर प्लेटफॉर्म their platform uh, here the word is there like uh, there is also a bit of confusion uh, amongst like uh, fbos ki who are e-commerce fbos like uh, if a seller is selling through a big uh, name uh, platform uh, it is not a e-commerce plat uh, e-commerce fbo it is not qualified as a e-commerce fbo but if he owns that platform abc.com xyz.com if he owns that platform only then that uh, platform will uh, that platform owner will be uh, called as e-commerce fbo and if the transactions uh, uh, being happened through that platform like uh, we have not covered just dial sort of thing because uh, in just dial uh, platform they are only placing the directory kind of services they only uh, give you the lead they do not make the sale happen through their platform so in that case we do not cover uh, that just that type of platforms as a e-commerce uh, food business then of course food ingredients means ki those food uh, which directly cannot be consumed by a human but are the part uh, or are the part of a food product like uh, as you have heard of premix for frks fortified rice kernels enzymes and all processing aids all those are being licensed under category 99 uh, by fssa so uh, this is the uh, responsibilities of fpos in broad which is laid down under fss act means that these are the primary responsibilities which every food business operator has to uh, ensure like no fpo shall manufacture store sell distribute any food which is unsafe misbranded substandard or contain एक्सटर्नियस मैटर एटलीस्ट अगर उसके नॉलेज में है तो दैट फूड बिजनेस ऑपरेटर सेल इमीडिएटली डील उसको अपने सप्लाई चेन से आउट करे और या फिर उसके रैक्स में है तो उसको आउट करे देन पर्सनल हाइजीन ही हैज टू एंश्योर ट्रेसिबिलिटी ऑफ द फूड राइट नाउ वी डोंट हैव द कॉमन प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर एंश्योर एंश्योरिंग द ट्रेसिबिलिटी वी हैव लेफ्ट इट to the food business ki whether uh, through the online or digital uh, way uh, they ensure traceability at their end or at least on paper we have made the regulation out of it in the licensing regulation it is written under condition of license 14 ki if you uh, purchase uh, from any fbo it should be licensed and if you sell uh, to any fbo in your channel if you are a b2b sort of business so then even uh, in that case you have to ensure that uh, purchaser from you uh, 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 you like if you are a manufacturer and you are selling it to a distributor then that distributor should be licensed or registered with fssi so in that case at least on paper we have uh, uh, ensured ki traceability should be maintained then uh, responsibility of wholesaler distributor and seller uh, is also written in the act like even if you are a wholesaler uh, distributor like uh, you are be responsible for supplying after the expiry date or if you are storing in the condition in violation of the instructions provided by the manufacturer manufacturer says that chocolate should be uh, stored under 30 degree celsius and if you have no provision in your outlet uh, as a retailer to store that thing then you will be responsible many times uh, uh, in our country we generally see ki um, carbonated drinks do not uh, 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 are not stored in that uh, conditions uh, which is meant so uh, that in that case retailers uh, are in violation of the act unsafe misbranded or unidentifiable of manufacturer that means ki any wholesaler distributor or retailer 
should not uh, handle any food which is unidentifiable of man. <coughs> then uh, comes to uh, 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 licensing and registration of act like section 31 1 clearly states that no person shall commence or carry on any food business except under a license that means nobody is allowed to carry out any business except under a license but under 31 2 some slight exemption has been given to petty manufacturers uh, or a petty retailer hawker it rent vendor or temporary stall holder or small scale cottage industries for those Apart from uh, or instead of license, registration facility is there. So it's uh, 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 the bifurcation of turnover and the capacity is given in the regulation. We'll come to that also. Then uh, there is a uh, very uh, um, uh, frequent portions on premise-based license. Although it is not very clearly written in the Act, but it is interpreted like the, uh, it is written under Section 131.6. DO may grant multiple license for uh, sorry single license for multiple establishments located in the same local area or for multiple food activities or food products. Further, uh, as FSSAI uh, license is operation based, uh, all the uh, Act and all the FPOs. Uh, uh, the license uh, comes with the responsibility attached to it and responsibility of what? Responsibility of the operations you are handling and operations are linked with the premise. So that is what we have interpreted and we have uh, uh, stick to it. He, if there is a single uh, uh, single premise, if it is not bifurcated into uh, further sub premises and handed over to uh, other entities, if it is manned by single entity, then only one license has to be obtained for this premise for n number of activities, be it uh, you are uh, uh, doing manufacturing or uh, you are importing any product to uh, the same premise or uh, whether you are uh, uh, running a canteen for your employees from the same premise or you have a small retail outlet at your factory premises for selling a few articles from there. So, in all these cases, if that is being handled by a single entity from that premise, then only one license is required. Yes, in uh, say some commercial places, if that premise is bifurcated into separate uh, in small uh, sections and being handled by different entities, then different licenses or registrations shall be obtained as per the entity. Further, whenever a um, FBO uh, files, uh, whenever a, a, any FBO uh, files application for the license or registration, and in some case, if DO uh, decides that the license should not be given at that particular premise or particular for that particular activity, then FBO is free to uh, uh, appeal to Commissioner of Food Safety because in our channel there is one food safety officer, DO, and about that. Commissioner, uh, so in case of states, Commissioner of Food Safety, in case of central licenses, CO acts as a Commissioner of Food Safety. So that appeal can be made to Commissioner, that is also on the, in the, uh, now we have developed the online mechanism and that should be done within 15 days of the rejection of that application. Uh, this is the portal which we have developed uh, since 2020 and we will come to that, uh, this is the uh, food safety compliance system. Uh, it is the home page of this. So, uh, what is the present status? Uh, as on 31st of October, we have approximately we have crossed the figure of 1 million uh, state licenses. Now, uh, we have 10.01 lakh of state licenses, majority part of this, and 70,000 uh, central licenses, which also covers the licenses granted to FBOs located at um, airports and seaports also. So in all 10.74 lakhs uh, active licensed businesses who are, are doing the business more than 100 uh, kg per day at least. Uh, and under central category we have the uh, FPOs who deals in the high risk food businesses like uh, proprietary, nutraceuticals, novel food, radiation uh, processing, such kind of businesses or uh, like uh, which comes exclusively and under central subject imports and exports or doing high volume business like under state manufacturing is up to 2 metric ton per day. So uh, beyond that all, uh, all gets covered under central category. 
So all those constitute 72,000 uh, central license and remaining <coughs> 10 lakh is the state license. And apart from that, for petty vendors, uh, the who are covered under Section 31.2 of Act, they are uh, who uh, they are the manufacturers who manufacture up to 100 kg per day. Or other than uh, manufacturer, if we talk, uh, they if they are they have the annual turnover of uh, 12 lakhs per annum. So those constitute to 45.46 lakhs uh, vendors in our country as of 31st of October. So in all. Approximately 55-56 lakh uh, FBOs are at uh, license registered in our country. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, basic chart which uh, I have extracted from the FOSCOS homepage. It is available on the homepage and it, it is updated at end of every month. It shows the distribution of state license FBOs. So if you see uh, major, majority of uh, state license FBOs, uh, are located in Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu and UP and uh, the figures are like Maharashtra has 1.75, uh, Tamil Nadu has 1.25 and uh, UP has 1 lakh. So 4 lakh FPOs, uh, state license, serious FPOs who are manufacturing or who are uh, involved in retail uh, and covered under license are in, the, in these 3 states. 40% FPOs are located in these 3 states. And remaining 60% may uh, you have Karnataka and uh, the graph shows and tells about the uh, weightage of each state uh, for the license. Then coming to the compliances which uh, our FBO is required to follow. <coughs> this is as per uh, the regulations, uh, licensing regulations. So for manufacturers, uh, one is uh, to obtain license in correct kind of business and for right eligibility. This is uh, this has been the issue which we uh, look for. We, we usually uh, guide business. We uh, you have not taken uh, into the right eligibility. Sometimes uh, they go for low or sometimes they go uh, go for other uh, kind of business which is not meant for uh, them. So the definitions are have been placed. Uh, on the FOSPAS homepage for kind of business and the eligibility, I will show you that uh, part also. So, uh, FBO should uh, acquaint himself uh, with the correct eligibility criteria and should try always to obtain license in the same eligibility. Uh, correct eligibility. Then, uh, uh, FBO should timely renew their license, uh, license registration. Um, during the Corona times, it was very frequent uh, 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 observation that uh, FBOs uh, forget, uh, forgot to renew their licenses on time. Although it is the completely online procedure, so I will come to that also. Key, but we have changed in uh, in the renewal process. Then apply modification of license. This is the most critical thing. Many times, what happens? Key business businesses. Uh, are required to give the names of technical person in charge and uh, person responsible for uh, complying with the condition of license. These two are the important persons apart from that list of directors and all the uh, if, uh, you have to submit the blueprint layout plan. If there is any documentary change which you have supplied at the time of obtaining the license and you are now a license holder, it's again the responsibility of you as an FBO to immediately uh, file the modification of license and for those documentary type of things, updations do not require even the modification fee. So, in uh, but uh, uh, you have to uh, make authority uh, or you, uh, you are required and this onus is on you to keep authority up to date with the information uh, as available or as applicable to your food business unit, be it a change in layout plan, be it a uh, change in the list of directors or the change in the um, those two key employees, uh, the technical person or the um, form 9 nominee. So uh, these kind of modifications should be done on time. Then uh, the uh, sub, uh, submission of annual return, the condition of license uh, number 5 tells that the annual return for every uh, preceding year should be submitted by 31st of May every year and uh, beyond which uh, you will be liable to pay a penalty of 100 rupees per day. So
So that annual return is also uh, completely online. So there is no discrepancy whether uh, it is received by the authority or not. In the past, it was the scenario, but now uh, there is no uh, kind this, these kinds of uh, anomalies there in the system. Then uh, uh, you are required as a manufacturer, you are required to employ at least one trained food safety supervisor or technical person. Then uh, product testing. Uh, <coughs> The n number of products you are uh, making, uh, uh, the finished products you are making, you have to get them tested at least once in six months through uh, either your own lab or through um, uh, FSA notified lab or any NABL lab. So that uh, test has to be done and to be uploaded on the phosphorus portal. Then uh, water testing, uh, uh, if it is being used as ingredient. So that has to be done uh, once per year and lab facility in case of oil manufacturing units. If you, uh, if you um, place an oil manufacturing unit for license only, not for registration. Uh, say if you um, have a processing plant uh, capable of uh, processing 100 uh, liters per day. Then in that case you are required to um, place a lab also in your unit. And for all other kind of businesses, as I have also already discussed, you are required to buy sell uh, only from licensed registered food vendors. Follow Schedule 4 FSMS and inspection checklist. We have uh, very objectively created that inspection checklist. You can uh, assess your unit based on the points applicable, uh, 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 based on the points written in the applicable checklist. Then uh, there is mandatory display of license registration numbers on the invoices. This we have uh, brought uh, with effect from 1st January 2022. So every food business operator is now bound to display that uh, 14 digit FSA license number on their uh, receipts. So all organized, uh, uh, if we go and purchase from all organized sectors has started uh, displaying, but um, uh, still uh, many of you uh, are lacking on this part. So. Now steps towards ease of doing business which we have taken in the past one or two years time. I will just uh, go through uh, with this. Many of you uh, might be aware of uh, these things also. Like instant modification for manufacturers. Like a manufacturer is already uh, involved into uh, manufacturing of certain, uh, uh, certain items. But at the uh, time he got, he uh, gets the order for say uh, some non-high risk product, say for <coughs> bakery items or for confectionery items. In that case, no authority approval is required. Uh, only he has to go and uh, select the product which is uh, available under the uh, non-high risk category. System is making uh, it a uh, bit concise which items will uh, will be allowed to uh, take under this instant modification that pro those products has to be taken from drop down list in that uh, uh, by doing that only a thousand rupees modification uh, fee is uh, uh, will be collected by the system and that uh, instantly modified uh, license will be given uh, at after making the payment so in that case, in, in case where businesses uh, generally get the orders uh, of making a new item which is under non-high risk category and standardized also, not, uh, it is not applicable for private products. In those cases, it is very helpful. Then uh, instant renewal which we have rolled out uh, since uh, 11th of January 2023. That means ki now businesses do not require the approval uh, of authorities for renewing their licenses even. They have to declare the compliance as per the inspection checklist, uh, whatever the checklist is applicable to your business and this is this checklist is same which are FU, uh, FSO, our food safety officer comes uh, with the uh, within and at the time of inspection. So this checklist helps you to uh, rec in recalling those points whether you are complying with those points or not. So in that case uh, you have to declare. Uh, you have to declare whether you are compliant or partial or non-compliant. And uh, after paying the fee for the renewal, your license uh, will be instantly uh, renewed. 
and within 14 days time it comes with the notice within 14 days time uh, whatever be the uh, non compliance you have declared you have to uh, uh, cover uh, uh, you have to become compliant with those points also and uh, since uh, 11th of january we restricted the renewal of uh, license to one year which we are going you know, to open uh, again uh, to one to five years uh, it is in process now, uh, in case of annual return, uh, uh, the penalty gets start uh, gets start from uh, rupees hundred per day from first of June. If you are a defaulter and if you don't submit submit the annual return on by thirty first May. So uh, since tw uh, twenty eleven, there was no capping on those annual return penalty, which we have now capped since uh, for the uh, if uh, that FBU has not filed the annual return for FY21-22 onwards. So for that now the uh, uh, 100 rupees per day will uh, get uh, capped to 5 times the license fee. Say if you are a manufacturer, uh, state license manufacturer of 3000 rupees, then it will be capped to 15000. And similarly for central license it will be capped to 37500. So this is applicable since FY21-22 onwards, not for the prior years. Now on and uh, one of the uh, major change which we brought in the February 22 is like uh, now initial application fee is reduced to rupees thousand. Uh, in case uh, you are a new startup, you are not well aware of all the conditions at the start of the business and or at the time of applying uh, uh, the license. So in that case, uh, we have uh, changed the process of collection of uh, fee. Uh, earlier we used to collect uh, the whole fee, mm -hmm. now the process has been changed to rupees 1000 only. If your application is, is found eligible by the uh, our licensing authorities, then they will set a status as application is eligible for grant of license subject to remaining payment. In that case, within 30 days you have to pay the uh, balance amount and get your license generated at your end only. It will not go to the authorities. Right. Then, uh, Earlier it was a uh, thing we you have to pay 100 rupees uh, for uh, as a late fee if you don't come for renewal uh, as early as 30 days prior to expiry date. Say your uh, license was getting expired on 31st of December, you, uh, latest you have to come by 2nd of December earlier. Otherwise you have to um, uh, enter 100 rupees uh, uh, that uh, late fee. So that provision has also been removed. Uh, provision enabled for renewing after the expiry, but uh, the penalty is higher on that side just to discourage food businesses not to use that provision. And like in, uh, you, uh, we are uh, not telling you to you use this provision and get your license uh, renew after the expiry date. So uh, uh, the licensing uh, renewal window gets opened as early as 180 days in uh, advance uh, uh, to the expiry date, in prior to the expiry date. Uh, and we used to send emails and uh, SMS reminders at, at least 10 times we used to send emails and SMS reminders to the uh, concerned abuse to renew their license. Further, in case they still uh, forget uh, to renew their uh, license, in that case they can uh, opt for this thing, but the penalty is the uh, very next day to the expiry is three times the an, uh, annual fee as uh, and till 180 days after beyond 90 days of expiry that goes to the five times. Then uh, in certain cases uh, businesses uh, do go for uh, change of license number or change of uh, premises where the address uh, uh, now has to be updated on the pre-printed packaging material. In that case, we uh, have uh, given a um, uh, order uh, and uh, in that case, FBO has to apply uh, for the approval and that permission can be given maximum for three times, one uh, at one go for the six months uh, to pay it with the applicable fee. That fee is written in that order key depending on how much uh, uh, the packaging material you have. Then uh, very recently we have created a separate queue for prioritizing the license registration application from a special category like uh, women and transgender entrepreneurs. If those uh, entrepreneurs apply on our portal and give their uh, PAN number, we identify 
uh, them under the special category and we list their applications uh, separately for, with our licensing authorities to uh, process it into one is to one ratio with general category. So those were the uh, recent uh, changes uh, made, uh, uh, recent decisions taken by the food authority and we have implemented which have largely uh, eased out the licensing process. Then uh, after the license, uh, there are the endorsements uh, like uh, organic, fortified and vegan endorsements. Uh, organic endorsement is for the products uh, or uh, for the FBOs who want to claim organic on their product label. So uh, they must have a certificate first from NPOP and PGS uh, in the two certification bodies for organic uh, in our country. So uh, with that certificate they can come to our portal uh, that uh, is scrutinized by our licensing authority and that is given. For plus F endorsement that level, uh, 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 lab report is required to show that you have uh, fortified uh, that food product with the correct level of fortification. So uh, with the, that lab report, uh, uh, you will be given the uh, 40 uh, that plus F uh, certificate. And for vegan endorsement, again the approval from the Science and Standard Division is required. With that approval, you have to come to our portal and uh, again uh, that, uh, that, is, uh, that gets endorsed uh, after the approval with the uh, license you have. And the validity for fortification endorsement and vegan endorsement is up till the validity of license registration. That means you don't have to renew it again and again. But the same is not with the case uh, organic endorsement. Here the <coughs> certification body which gives, gives you that uh, certificate is only valid for one year. That's why it is uh, at, uh, that validity is restricted at one year. These are the logos which you can uh, stick on your uh, product labels. Once you obtain that endorsement, uh, on license. Then uh, I'll let you through to the four uh, small videos uh, of FOSCOS. Uh, one is for FOSCOS homepage, uh, one for uh, filing of license and what a business needs to do after getting a FSI license. So that is very important now because licensing as uh, 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 you have seen the course, we have made very uh, the procedure completely uh, mm, hassle free. But uh, now we want to shift the focus of food business in, uh, for the post licensing uh, compliances. So that third point is very important. I will let you through to the uh, first uh, filing of application. So this is the FOSCO. Excuse me. The video is there, it's spinning. Chal raha. So uh, this is the FOSCO homepage. On the first, very first column, we have clicked there. This is the very important page to make the decision. Where is the premise of operation? Uh, it, whether it is uh, your food business unit located at railway station, uh, airport, seaport, or at the general uh, location. So um, the video is uh, for general. You have to select the state where your premise is located. Then there are uh, the activities grouped into the uh, several group heads like uh, uh, for manufacturer, for trade retail, for food services, if it is located on central government agencies or head office. So uh, under manufacturer, now it is further classified uh, based on the inspection checklist or the integrities associated with the, that KOB. So uh, um, under uh, general, it is uh, under the manufacturer, it is like daily units, vegetable, uh, oil, slaughtering, meat processing, fish, 
uh, nutraceuticals. If all, uh, if your product uh, you are going to manufacture doesn't fall under the above category, then you are you can go for general manufacturing category. And if your product doesn't go under general manufacturing category, means if it is not a standardized food product, then you have to go for proprietary uh, food. And similarly, if it is not under proprietary, then novel food and then substances added to food, radiation processing, 100% export oriented uh, for the exporters. Uh, these are the uh, sub classification for under manufacturing category. So here we, if we uh, go and select, read the definition of general manufacturing. Here is the eligibility criteria, ki more than 2 metric ton and no grain cereal pulses milling units because that is a uh, state subject. If you are a, only a miller of the pulses grains, then uh, no, uh, their sealing uh, limit will not apply. You can straight away choose for uh, state license. Say uh, we can uh, opt for multiple activities uh, with general uh, manufacturing. We can opt for restaurants also. And if we have uh, done with it, so uh, as per the as per the selection made by us. Uh, uh, for the general manufacturing, I am eligible for central license for a restaurant uh, category. Uh, I am eligible for state license, but no two licenses will be granted to me. The final uh, eligibility based on uh, selection uh, between central and state, I will be uh, allowed to take uh, or go for central license category. So that button shows you you are eligible for central license. So uh, when you uh, proceed, uh, you have to declare the company name, address of the premise where it is located. And uh, after the address page, you have to uh, provide the Google pin uh, that geotagging of your uh, unit. Uh, it will take you to the nearest part even if you are not uh, if you think that is not the correct location you can place that link uh, that pin to the correct location. After that you have to uh, uh, select uh, the uh, which product you have to manufacture for that you must be aware of the uh, product category that is in the homepage section. I will tell you how to uh, locate your product. Uh, just see uh, uh, this video. In that, in this case, if you are going to uh, manufacture any bread and biscuit type products, uh, bakery type products, it comes under 7.2. But for uh, making life easier for FBOs to uh, identify their product uh, uh, amongst the um, uh, categories, so that I will show you in the next week. In the home page. So uh, this is the uh, thing. Uh, here, uh, one of the important part is relabeler and repacker, which we have uh, uh, given clarifications at here also and under the FAQs also. The one is the manufacturer who manufactures himself. One is relabeler who doesn't have its own manufacturing unit, and uh, he gets his all products manufactured through third-party manufacturers. In that case. That brand owner is called as relabeler and equally responsible for the product compliance. So all the we generally tell ki, you know, whenever uh, there is non-compliant product for the part related to hygiene and all that on that case, uh, yes, that manufacturer will be uh, held responsible. And in case the formulation or in case the labeling part claims uh, on the, the product. Uh, or for all such cases, relabeler uh, will also be held liable uh, for it. Then repacker. Repacker generally, um, uh, um, FGO who takes in bulk and then uh, packs in smaller quantities. So that person is repacker. So uh, when we uh, uh, when we go uh, and select our product, after that you know, we have to make selection for uh, 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 for the kind of uh, uh, subcategorization of manufacturer i am a manufacturer relabeler or repacker in case i choose relabeler i need to obtain a online noc from 
manufacturer. Earlier it was a you know, physical process and a uploading of document, but we have now uh, 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 we have now introduced that online NOC mechanism so that even licensing authorities cannot question the uh, format which you take from the manufacturer. Earlier it was the case. Uh, that NOC uh, sometimes licensing authorities object the kind of NOC you uh, get it from you get the uh, get it from the manufacturer. So, in case of relabeler, uh, the button comes for the uh, declaring the manufacturer. As soon as you declare the manufacturer with the license number, the online uh, request goes to that manufacturer uh, manufacturer on his cost cost portal. Then there that authorized signatory has to accept the request with the digital sign mobile OTP uh, uh, or Aadhaar so uh, when, that, uh, when he accept that request only then uh, that request uh, uh, with the along with the NOC uh, gets visible in your application so uh, only then you will be able to proceed but not from here uh, at the payment part Till, uh, uh, if you have sent that request, system will allow you to proceed from here. Then in case of restaurant, uh, you have to select only the broad category like uh, prepared foods and save and add and you have to uh, you have, you know, if you wish to declare uh, some other details like uh, uh, lab, it is not mandatory in other kind of businesses. Um, now see, uh, till this part, if you want to, uh, if you are a new food business and you want to see your eligibility, if you want to pay the, with the system, what are the requirements of system? System has not asked you even single email or phone number. If you are through with it, if you are very certain with the uh, selections you have made in the KOB, in the uh, eligibility between central and the state in the production capacity. Only after that, system is asking you to uh, provide the applicant name and create the uh, login uh, ID. I am just uh, fast forwarding it. You have to provide the OTP that uh, phone numbers get validated and then uh, that application number becomes your uh, login ID till the time you obtain the license or registration. After that, this is the form B part. Uh, partial details are uh, filled up uh, uh, from the previous page. After that, you have to declare the technically qualified person and then person responsible for license. Here, uh, that technical qualified person uh, in case of uh, manufacturer still now uh, a science graduate and all that uh, uh, in the degree in the dairy or in uh, food technology is required we are now coming up uh, with the approval of food authority that uh, some relax in that qualification now uh, first uh, uh, trained personnel like food safety supervisor that person will be uh, uh, will also be allowed if you uh, if you are not uh, capable of arranging a science uh, that you know, graduate so that person's uh, first certificate number has to be fit here and that system will validate uh, this uh, number uh, then uh, to in order to implement that order uh, which we are going to release uh, for a food safety supervisor then in the uh, lower part that uh, person responsible for complying with condition of license that has to be mentioned. Then comes uh, the uh, after submission of uh, after submission of uh, uh, those communication details, uh, you have to upload all the mandatory documents. Uh, along with on the page of mandatory document, we have provided the sample documents against each mandatory document so that you can refer that sample document and uh, you can ensure that your document looks like uh, that sample document and you can upload uh, that uh, m m m part. So you can expect lesser number of queries on your uh, application. So uh, all these uh, sample documents are available. Uh, against every mandatory document. This we have uh, uh, also made available on the home page. I will show you uh, that part. You don't uh, have to 
uh, come uh, to this part also to uh, have access to sample document. We have created the functionality at home page the way you can feed the uh, kind of business you are looking for and then a sample documents will be available there. So uh, all the uh, documents uh, you have to upload, the uh, system will not allow you to uh, proceed uh, till you upload all the documents. And there are certain uh, other documents applicable uh, if uh, in case you want to uh, provide like GST registration, it is not an uh, uh, applicable document, but in case you want to provide, you can and you have to read these declarations inspection checklist otherwise also uh, that checklist is available in the, in the footer uh, in the footer of uh, fast cost you can always uh, click on this checklist and you can view what are the check points uh, uh, what are the points available and applicable to your kind of business when you proceed save and next then you have to verify uh, with the uh, uh, mobile number or the authorized signatory who is filling this application. So once you uh, place the OTP received on your phone, it is verified and then you have to uh, make the uh, payment. And that's it with the application part. Now the, we have uh, two online mechanisms right now available. This is uh, online uh, through Razor Pay or Pay. The fee, as you can see, it is only 1180,000 plus quality GST. So this is the first part. Coming back, uh, I'll show you uh, what Foscos home, home page has. All for food businesses because majority of the information is available on the home page. These two search bars which are available on the home page uh, are very handy since the inception of Foscos. Uh, these are designed for the newer food businesses who are not aware of the right category of the food product. So this is basically an index uh, of uh, more than 1000 uh, standardized food products. Here I have written biscuit and search for it. So it is telling me the category for bis biscuit is on which the licensing has to be done is 77.2 which I have selected while licensing. And that is that description is given under 2.4.15 of that regulation where the product standards are there. So this is bit of uh, indexing then uh, for the standardized products. And if you want to have a complete list, you can click on view all standardized products and you can get that list of all standardized products for, for which uh, Foscos is giving uh, uh, license or which are coming under the uh, drop down list. Apart from the, uh, if your uh, intended product doesn't feature in this, you have to apply go for proprietary or novel food as the case. Then this is the eligibility part like uh, if you are looking for a student, you can click on it, you can get the uh, word restaurant search on that. Then uh, it is telling the turnover and what is the applicability license and registration fee and if it is a dhaba kind of thing then also it is showing you the eligibility and if you want to have a complete eligibility you can click on this you have a separate pdf document in which all the businesses business types activity types are listed along with the fee then uh, coming to uh, coming back to the home page uh, you have a know your officer facility here you can find out the officer responsible uh, or acting in your area so if you select delhi uh, uh, district and then the type of authority sub district is not mandatory uh, state or central you can put in and get the name of the live uh, this list is from the live server so whosoever is uh, responsible for your jurisdiction you will have the a uh, name and uh, email uh, ID of those officers. Similarly, uh, newer business can uh, take the help of Food Safety Mitra. Those Food Safety Mitra uh, uh, can, uh, their details can also be accessed through uh, this portal. You can uh, search it from here. So all the Food Safety Mitras 
uh, with the, their contact details are available. You can uh, call them and you can at the uh, chat uh, and you can ask for help assistance. Then on the home page we have the sections like announcement where we generally uh, provide the uh, all kind of changes we list here. Then under the health topics we have, uh, uh, this is very important, we have a document required uh, uh, window. When you click on it, uh, it will lead you to uh, the page where the, all the documents which are mandatory or the sample documents uh, which I was talking about. Uh, then uh, the FAQs on licensing registration, which we generally uh, uh, update whenever any change in policy happens or whenever we uh, conduct a NPO meet uh, and we receive uh, a certain type of query, we update the FAQs on. Uh, licensing registration or compliance and and uh, third one is for the health care. The, the user manuals available on the phosphorus is uh, these all are the uh, user manuals which you can uh, uh, access and uh, get yourself acquainted with the flows of phosphorus. Uh, there are video tutorials also uh, on under this uh, user manual section. Then uh, this is the FAQ page. You can uh, search a keyword, and uh, you uh, that FAQ will be shortlisted. Otherwise, all uh, 140, 50 FAQs are there in total for licensing. Say, say you have written a known written, so all a known written related five six FAQs are there. So you can uh, read uh, those. Then these are the health tech details. Uh, we have the FSA health tech working all, all 7 days uh, from morning 7 am to uh, 11 pm. Then uh, coming to the uh, 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 FBO search uh, which is based on the uh, products obtained by manufacturers. So any consumer or any citizen of the uh, country can access this window uh, and get the details of FPOs located in a particular area. <coughs> Say uh, if we are searching for bread type products and who are the active licensees. in say New Delhi area. We are selected in the New Delhi area and on clicking on search it will fetch the list total 26 uh, licenses are there. Uh, we have the facility for export to uh, Excel also. You can extract that data to Excel. These are the basic data, uh, no, non-sensitive data. Further, this is the very recent functionality we have uh, geo tag those units in uh, New Delhi area and all these uh, uh, units in the green uh, showing the sky also green bakers and confectioners and that and status is active. So this is what we have provided on the uh, home page and the FBO search. Uh, this is the documents part. Uh, when you click on uh, this new renewal and modification of license, you will be given uh, let me to the uh, you will be uh, shown an order uh, which we have released in uh, 19th March 2021 uh, regarding the segregation. Earlier to that, uh, all the doc uh, documents were. Uh, were given or provided in general means that uh, those document list was not categorized as per the business activities. Mm -hmm. But with that order, we have very categorically uh, defined documents required for non-manufacturing units. Means those five uh, documents are required for non. These are very general. And if you are a manufacturer, apart from those five, uh, this is the uh, water testing report, which is applicable only for only for uh, the businesses who are uh, using water as an ingredient. 
So uh, this is the list for the manufacturers. So uh, above five are those general documents, and below five are the manufacturer specific blueprint, layout plan, production unit photograph, name list of equipments, uh, analysis report, and recall plan. Further, uh, if you click on this view required documents for license, you can uh, uh, choose your uh, kind of business. Under manufacturer, you have to select the subcategory. Say if you choose dairy units, you will be shown all the documents here in a simplified manner. And then you can uh, view the sample document right from here. So you don't have to travel uh, to uh, filing of application. So you can click on any sample document and you can have uh, a look and feel of that document. Like production unit photographs, what should they, uh, uh, they consist of by your code? So the same uh, sample document is available with the licensing authority also. So that he also restricts himself to uh, uh, these set of things. This, these are all to reduce the ambiguity between the uh, applicant and the licensing authority so that they uh, keep um, on the same path. So this is the overview of Fosco's homepage. Now, uh, once you obtain the license, this is only the first part or what we say, this is only the 10% of thing or the first step coming or becoming the uh, compliant food business. Obtaining license doesn't make you a compliant food business, it is only a first part. So the story uh, starts from here, uh, what a food business needs to do after getting a license. So in a quick 5-6 minutes, uh, it is already one but we will have a uh, licensed food businesses have to log in there, then they have to uh, put their license number. This is that, uh, from test scenario, test server. So, if it is being logged in from a new computer, no system new system that the security pro uh, protocol is also there so you have to uh, enter uh, OTP then uh, this is the dashboard of food business if you have already uh, 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 if you are a licensed food business you can click on issued license you will get a li uh, license with uh, the then uh, there are several menus on the uh, left uh, like under license, and there is the provision for applying endorsements uh, and getting post inspection clarification type of things. If uh, inspection happened and uh, FSO has asked some clarification, that will be listed here. And then renewal modification window is there if you are if your license is due for renewal, means you, you are in the last six months of validity period, then that entry will be shown. And similarly for modification. Uh, you can, if you can, uh, if you click on apply for modification of license, you will be thrown that. And uh, under food uh, consumer grievance, uh, there is uh, the uh, list for pending complaints and closed complaints by you. So uh, the how consumer grievance flow uh, uh, flows in this system, like. Uh, whenever a consumer uh, wants to lodge his uh, complaint, if he puts in the license number, the complaint goes to the uh, FBO, uh, that concerned FBO first. And that will list here for first seven days. And in, if within seven days you uh, respond to it, you file uh, any, uh, say, interim action uh, also, uh, that, uh, that complaint sent back to the consumer uh, whether he is satisfied or not. If in case he is not satisfied, he can escalate that uh, grievance to the concerned licensing authority. And even in, in case you fail to respond within seven days, then also that complaint escalate to the licensing authority. Then comes the uh, annual return. Uh, if you are a manufacturer, you have to file that annual return, manufacturer or importer. Uh, that entry of your license is shown here. You have to proceed it from here, and uh, all the file inheritance are shown here. So you can uh, that revi uh, revising inheritance. This is the test server. That option is showing up here. We are very soon going to launch this feature. 
कि इन केस योर इंफॉर्मेशन प्रोवाइडेड इन द एनुअल रिटर्न बिकम्स सम टाइम यू वांट टू अपडेट दैट इंफॉर्मेशन यू विल बी अलाउड टू डू सो बाय फाइलिंग रिवाइज रिटर्न बट दैट दैट विल बी विद पेनल्टी पेनल्टी और सम से रिवाइज so in the same manner uh, all the inspection uh, reports uh, which in past if that inspection has happened on your food unit that will be uh, listed here uh, the samples lifted from your unit will be listed here the primary testing report lab report uh, will be available against the sample then quarterly returns for exporter that has been disabled uh, this is on the test server and then the audits audits are mandatory for central uh, licensed units uh, which are dealing in high risk categories so those uh, fios are required to undergo uh, audit once every year so that auditor uh, when conducts the audit it's your ask uh, you should ask that auditor to put that report in his audit management system and that audit management system tells foscos that audit has been conducted and it gets start reflecting here so uh, if you are uh, if you have conducted the audit or undergone that audit and if it is not uh, that entry is not there that means your auditor has not made the entry in the audit management system further if you have encountered any uh, technical uh, issue while applying for renewal modification annual returns or uh, any uh, case that technical for that technical issue we have a help uh, system you can uh, uh, select that kind of issue and you can raise that ticket that ticket is directly sent to our id uh, team concerned id person handles that thing and uh, it is resolved within a uh, time of container within say 24 hours 48 hours and if sometimes uh, it is a critical to within a week uh, in such manner if uh, they are in that then that six monthly lab testing report this we have introduced in uh, 2023 like uh, as i have said there is a compliance to for the manufacturers to get their product tested at every six months once in at least uh, every six months so uh, now you are also required to upload that report so uh you uh, you have to select that period uh, those earlier reports are listing uh, getting listed here in case uh, you want to again upload any uh, more test uh, reports for that product you can uh, uh, and just uh, on this window all those products are coming by default these account to products are coming by default from your license database say uh, sometimes it happens ki uh, product is endorsed in license but the variant is there for that product so you can again select that product and choose the variant also and uh, you can uh, upload the report against that uh, part so that facility is there even if that is not reflecting that variant is not reflecting in that uh, license uh, in your license and it is compliant because uh, variants are not required to show until or unless the uh, separate standard is there for that variant so um, that standardized name covers in license but in uh, while uploading the lab test report you can select uh, separate or by selecting others can uh, kar sakte hain then the batch number expiry date and uh, batch date are uh, uh, added to this page uh, but they are non mandatory uh, at present you can uh, if it is available you can put if it is not available you can skip Uh, also for the lab report if it is uh, done in house you can upload that report or get sample report if you have conduct uh, 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 got your product tested through and uh, our fssi notified lab so we have given the instruction uh, to lab to put it on the info let portal so uh, in that case Uh, get sample report means ki you have to put that report number and the system will ask you the otp you have provided to the info let portal so it will automatically link so in that case uploading part uh, uh, can be skipped so your report has been uploaded in uh, here you can see uh, one is uh, which we have uploaded here and one with the nil uh, batch number batch date or 
So, so both uh, kind of things can be done. And once you submit it, after submission, it, you know, it is now available with the licensing authorities also. You cannot delete that thing. So the provision for deletion is only prior to submission. Then there are the provision for license improvement notice uh, and the uh, adjudication penalties or relabeler NOP as I have discussed earlier and uh, file your response on the expired license. Say some, uh, your license has been expired. So authority, uh, we have instructed the authorities to, uh, um, to inspect those expired licenses in few cases. So in case you want to submit your response, that provision has been made, your license has been expired and you want to submit why you don't want to continue with the food business. So that's it uh, on the FBO's party, how you can enter or uh, disguise your compliances through FOSCOS program. Um, this is the uh, pending action uh, window uh, on which uh, all the uh, compliances on the left menu panel are uh, being shown in a quick manner uh, and uh, say show cause notice um, uh, it is showing to uh, file your response after expiry of license one. So it simply showing that responses are pending against those two boxes. Uh, so uh, that's it uh, with this uh, video. One is with the Food Safety Connect app, which we have left. Uh, we can skip that also. Uh, we can go uh, much now. Time now, we five minutes So now, uh, one is Food Safety Connect app. Uh, Uh, this is the app launched by FSSAI uh, in 2021, uh, meant for consumers and food businesses. So uh, this is the home page of first, uh, uh, that uh, Food Safety Connect app. This is the provision for uh, continuing without login for uh, consumers for login grievance or for food businesses can apply for registration. Uh, that process is inbuilt in this app. For license, it will direct to the FOSCOS uh, window. Uh, if you continue without login, these are the provisions like uh, no, you can access to the notifications, then you can verify the license registration uh, through this app, you can uh, search for food businesses, you can uh, uh, play with data statistics. For food businesses, there are quick links uh, with uh, for the eligibility criteria, FOSFOS user manuals, FOSFOS announcements, orders, apply uh, for registration, license kit. So all are the quick links which a food business generally needs uh, uh, in day to day uh, uh, for day to day matters. Similarly for consumers, like pro, uh, links for product standards, food uh, safety display boards are also there and the state health decks and the uh, values of this. For consumers, it is uh, like uh, to link for the Eat Right India, what is Eat Right India, Mythbusters, Artists for Safe Food. So whatever the FSI resource material is there uh, on the FSI website, they can easily go and uh, have access to that as well. Then uh, coming back to the uh, home page, uh, there is the apply for registration. If you go for apply for registration, uh, the basic criteria is there. Uh, you can go with that process. It is a, a very simpler process uh, with the app. Uh, it was uh, uh, created with the thought that mostly petty vendors generally don't have the knowledge how to access laptops. If they can uh, be able to use uh, these, this app, uh, this is uh, um, being created in Hindi also, so that will help. Further, FOSCOS is right now available in six uh, local languages, six regional languages, Hindi, Marathi, Tamil, Telugu, apart from English. Uh, this is for consumer. Uh, now, uh, how consumer can log the grievance? Consumer has to create a uh, first login ID uh, password, and after signing in, uh, the status of the complaints are shown here. Now, no complaint was uh, made from this ID, so it is showing zero. If you want to create a complaint, you can click on Add Complaint. 
and then the type of product you have uh, taken uh, and there on uh, you can uh, list out or give the facts uh, of your complaint so that it can be rightly, uh, correctly uh, resolved. So um, uh, after this, uh, the last slide is, uh, this, these are the assistance available to FBO. Right now, like it is not like you koi bhi ek aad kaam shuru karna chaata hai, to kaise kare? Uske liye bahut saara help abhi available hai, like food safety mitra mein aapko dikha hai. Right now, 900 country mein hai. Iske baad help ke liye to technical issues ka bhi window dikha hai. FAQs available hai. Uh, user manual uh, tutorials and standardized product search uh, uh, kar sakte hai. further iske baad bhi hum log uh, FBO meets bhi karte hai, sector wise like uh, uh, kabhi, uh, uh, catering sector ke saath ya manufacturers mein dairy sector ke saath uh, rice mills ke saath to ye uh, constant meets hum log karte hai, jis mein hum log, uh, food businesses ka queries bhi sunte hai, aur, jo recent changes hue hai, uh, pure FSSAI uh, ke, uh, uh, during that period, past period, wo unko explain bhi kiya hai. Then uh, helpline we have uh, and for reaching out FBOs, we uh, are very focused uh, in sending emails and SMS through the FOSCOS portal. Just the request with the food business is to provide the correct uh, license uh, that email IDs and phone numbers. Sometimes what happens when they apply through uh, uh, consultants or uh, uh, some other uh, assistance providers, they do not take care then ki whether that uh, person has put my uh, email ID and phone number also or not. Because we have created the provision for primary and secondary contact details. Say we in primary, uh, it should be uh, for uh, you know, food uh, business and in secondary it can be of that consultant or the assistance provider. So this is the part and the statement in the end, the responsible food business operator is who aims to be self-compliant. It's not like ki we as a authority only uh, uh, try or get uh, some fault of yours. It's always be from the food business operator ki he, uh, that operator should always aim for, to, uh, for being a self-compliant business. Thank you. Any, uh, yes. any queries from your side? If uh, that has not been addressed, it is not. First of all, I would like to thank. Uh, it's a very informative and very short uh, message provided by you, but uh, it's very wonderful. I listen everything. My question might be specific related to certain industry. First of all, uh, whenever food industry is food industry. So, for example, we are supplying certain material to the food industry. Is it applicable? FSSI license must be gone. Uh, all these traders also, those who are supplying to food. Uh, you have to specify your product. Because, uh, what, so for what are you supplying to? Because sometimes, uh, I'll just share my experience. Uh, food businesses, uh, businesses who are dealing with packaging material, that are also sometimes raised queries. Do you have to take FSSI license? No. So, I will go back to the app that there is food in the app. What is food? Food is the product for human consumption. If it is not meant for human consumption, then that is not licensed by us. So, the packaging material is not fully. I will tell you about the details. For example, in the pharmaceutical industry, there is a quick inverse like a test of food drug licenses. In the same fashion, when we are supplying food industry, we have to buy water becomes as an ingredient for the food material. When we are supplying water treatment chemicals to the food industry, so does it require FSI license? I will say that we have to clear the water in the water. We have to clear the packaged drinking water because in the food definition we have to clear the packaged drinking water. अब वाटर एस ए इंग्रेडिएंट वो या वाटर केमिकल दे रहे हैं तो वो जो केमिकल है वो फूड का पार्ट बनने जा रहा है नहीं जा रहा है वो सिर्फ दुलाई के लिए या समटाइम्स इस काम की आता है या एस ए क्लीनिंग एजेंट देन इट विल नॉट बी कवर्ड अंडर we are supplier of some devices which increases the shelf life of food products it is used for the uh, increasing the shelf life of the food product. Whether these equipment or devices required for the FSSI license? No. But the body is asking? No, you should refer to one thing because I am not a pure uh, sense and standard division there. 
there we have uh, created uh, and laid down the standard for processing aids but uh, whether that comes under processing aid or not i am not sure no. you have to first uh, check whether uh, that processing aid uh, that is specified in the processing aid agar wo hai to fir hum license kar rahe hain uska processing aid ka but otherwise no. it is not a part of the processing aid ये सिंपल कि जैसे पानी की बोतल है पानी की बोतल उसमें से निकाल दी सेम लेजर बीम लाइक कोबोट सिक्सटीन लाइक दैट दिस इज समथिंग डिफरेंट यूनिक वी आर नॉट लाइसेंसिंग दैट मशीनरी और दैट पार्क नो श्योर सर यस यस वी हैव अप्लाइड फॉर दैट बट वी आर नॉट गेटिंग द रजिस्ट्रेशन सम अथॉरिटीज आस्क अस टू गेट दैट नहीं आपको सेटअप करने के लिए उसका चाहिए सेटअप करने का मतलब कि उस रेडिएशन प्रोसेसिंग का चाहिए लाइसेंस लाइक उस प्रोसेसिंग यूनिट का चाहिए बट उस प्रोसेसिंग मशीनरी का एज अ प्रोडक्ट नहीं दे रहे हम लाइसेंस बिकॉज़ दिस इज दैट यू आर यूजिंग इन द योर फूड प्रोसेसिंग यूनिट सो नहीं आप प्रोसेसिंग कर रहे हैं ना प्रोसेसिंग तो जैसे हमारे एक्ट में भी अलाउड है रेडिएशन प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ फूड और उसके लिए आपका बार्क से लाइसेंस भी होना चाहिए बार्क एटॉमिक रिसर्च सेंटर से तो हम वी आर नॉट लाइसेंसिंग दैट इक्विपमेंट मशीनरी को थोड़ा ना करेंगे लेकिन हम यूनिट को तो लाइसेंस कर रहे हैं ना जिस जिस यूनिट में वो बन रहा है इक्विपमेंट उसको लाइसेंस नहीं 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 तो उसको नहीं करेंगे इक्विपमेंट तो नहीं करेंगे ना ठीक है सो दैट इट मींस दैट वी आर नॉट रिक्वायर्ड टू गेट द लाइसेंस यस ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू दैट्स थैंक यू सर फॉर Warehouses and new premises were stored and manufactured. Every time we added warehouse, do we need to have a separate license for it? Definitely, ma'am. Uh, because uh, uh, in the starting, I have told you that premise-based uh, FSI uh, license and registration is completely based on premise, and that relation I have, I have also spoken about. So every time you uh, even uh, you are going beyond this building to another building, if it is not in the same local area, sometimes. so it is only the uh, abuse wish uh, in the case of local area uh, ki to get the same license for the multiple you say you have a one unit uh, located after two halls uh, there so you can declare that in one but if that your warehouse is located in different uh, district or sub district then you are required to obtain separate license for each of your house okay. I think that's uh, thank you sir for such an informative uh, session uh, for this uh, I request uh, Mr. Siddharth Roy principal manager uh, FSSA to give a uh, token of thanks uh, to Akshay sir please sir Thank you all for attending the session. Um, thank you, thank you from my side also for such patient listening. <laughs>